scientifically stupid here and today I'll be showing you how to use the motion tracking feature in blender sorry if I sound a little weird today I have a cold basically what you want to do is hit file new reload startup file and then basically it'll start a new project what you want to start out by deleting the cube we're not going to need that then you want to change the viewport to movie clip editor then what you're going to want to do is hit open and open pretty much any uh, any video that you have that and sometimes it's a lot easier if you place something to track in my case I placed some quarters on the ground what you want to do then is prefetch it into the computer memory and this purple bar should go all the way to the end and if it doesn't it's pretty simple to to change all you have to go to do is go to file and then user preferences and then uh, you go to the system and change the memory cache limit and then you will be able to store more in the memory so once it's prefetched you can start working on it basically what you want to do is hit make sure your search is enabled over here <laughs> hold down control and then click each spot that you can track. Make sure before you do this you're at the beginning of your footage. And also if um, if your footage is longer and it stops before um, your video is done you can just extend the end. Basically what you want to do now is hit A once or twice until everything is selected then you want to hit track forward so basically a little play button beside track over here what that'll do is it'll track it to the very last frame and if one of them doesn't work just delete that one we'll fix this later now what you want to do is when you're at the end this is what I do at least hit detect features and it'll detect some of the features of high contrast to track now what you want to do is track it backwards and you'll see that it will start tracking them this one up here unfortunately it stopped because the part of it that it was tracking went off the screen and the same thing happened for this one this one and this one basically if that happens you just want to select them and delete them and you can see that all the rest of them have tracked pretty nicely except for this one when you're at the beginning run one more detect features and track them to the end now select all the ones that didn't really work which in this case is just just sorry um, which in this case it's like five yep and delete those after you've done that go to the beginning and come to solve make sure that under lens up here you have changed your focal length to the proper focal length for whatever camera you're using or you can come here to camera camera presets and select your camera in there in my case I'm using an iPad Air so mine's 31 millimeters and if you happen to be able to find your camera in here it will preset everything to whatever your camera is next what you want to do is find where your camera moves a lot in your Im in your video or image in my case mine starts starts at 140 and ends at 220 so I'm gonna keyframe that at 220 so now it tells the computer it tells blender that between keyframe 140 and 220 there's lots more movement than compared to everything else in the video so next what you want to do is hit solve camera motion you it'll give you a solve error mine is 1.2353 and basically if you have a solve error less than one that's really good you can wait for the next step if you have one from one to three it's a pretty good track but it could be better and if you have one above three you have a pretty bad track and you're gonna want to clean some frames out so I want to get less of a solve error so I'm gonna come down here to clean up select frame 20 frames 20 and put put in whatever my error was so in my case it's 1.23 now I'm gonna hit clean tracks and it'll select some of the tracks out of mine I'm just going to hit X and delete them so those are the bad tracks next what you want to do is hit solve camera motion again and you should have much less in my case mine is 0.29 which is really good next 
what you want to do is go back to your 3D view and you can see that, that if you hit play, your camera still doesn't move and you want it to according to what your video was. So you want to come here to the objects constraints menu and add a camera solver. Basically this will add a bunch of little blips which are your tracking markers and if you hit zero and play it through it follows the exact movements of your camera throughout the video. So now you want to open up a new tab over here and make it a the movie clip editor. Make sure you're on solve and hit set as background. This will help with lots of stuff like it will help with um, just lost my words it'll help place everything throughout your scene next you want to select three tracks and hit floor and then select one of them to be your origin and what you also would like to probably do I'm actually gonna set this one as my origin what you also probably want to do is set one as the x-axis in my case I'm actually going to select this one and set this as the origin and then you can see this one's pretty much perfectly set up for the x-axis so I'm already going to set that up there and now what you want to do is set the scale so I'm going to select these two and I'm going to make it five um, so scale no, I'm actually going to make it a lot less, so I'm going to make this 2, set scale, you know, I'll let it look at this, I kind of want a bigger scale, but I think I'm fine for now. So, after you've done that, hit set up tracking scene. After you've gotten that, you can close this window, and you can see that it has automatically set up a tracking scene for you. Now don't delete any of this yet because you're going to want to find out what it does. If you select the plane and come to compositing, it has already given you a lot of preset up stuff. So like there should be one node with foreground and one with background. It basically, it already collects all the shadows and everything from what you have made. So basically, if you scale that up a little bit and you put the little cube here on top of where the where everything is I'm actually going to um, place this light correctly in my scene and I'm going to change this to cycles render for just a moment change the power to 2 and make it a sun lamp that's what works for me I'm going to set it so it's facing my cube. You can see it's facing my cube. Now if we go to zero, and then you can see on the first layer I have my cube, and the second layer I have my plane. So if you shift select both of them, you should see your cube on your plane. I'm actually going to move this to the side a little since the sun's coming from over there. And hit three, rotate. That's pretty good. After you've done that, you want to make sure both of them are selected and hit F12 and that will render out basically a rough sketch of what your render will look like. If you hit F12, it'll basically give you, it'll basically render out an image which will show you how well your tracking is doing and how well your object fits in with the scene. Now, if we just wait for this to render out, you can see it's pretty much almost done already. It just rendered out the cube, which will it'll put on top of a layer, which is on top of the video. And basically, this is the background. It's rendering out the shadow of the cube relative to my light source. So we'll find out what happens when we're done with that. That's pretty much all you need uh, to do. You can add your own objects. For example, I've tried putting a dragon egg in my living room, stuff like that. If you want to see a tutorial on that, then post it in the comments below. And so, what else you can do with this, if you come to 3D view, you can make it look like the, there's a sinkhole in the ground, maybe there's a car 
that's in your scene, you can make it, you can pretty much make anything look like it's in real life. Like, you could record a, one of your tables and make it look like Blender's pouring water all over your table, or something like that. But, this is almost done, in the meantime, so you can see it's on path tracing tile 1 on 111 out of 135. Basically, it says out of 135 because my resolution is only at 50%. If I were to turn that up to 100%, it would be 510 tiles, but that would take too long. If you're going to turn it up to 510 tiles, you are gonna you should do that by, when you're rendering it out in your final, which will make it look a lot better. One problem that I had, you can see how real this actually looks, how much it blends in with the scene, with the shadow and everything. I'm just going to open a new tab so I don't have to ruin that. One thing that I had issues with was I would add an object. I would delete both of these because I didn't know what they did. I'd add an object to my scene, and then when I rendered it out... Oh, uh, boy, I rendered the wrong one. Oh boy. Basically, if I can, can I, can't, apparently can't render that. I'm actually going to, I'll just show you on this one. So basically what I would do is I would have everything on the same layer. So I would have nothing here, and I'd always be on the second layer, and I've had everything on the same layer. And then when you render something out like that, it will give you a very bad result. I was stuck there, stuck doing this for months, and I could never find out what my problem was. And then I finally figured out what my problem was, and that was that I had to render both of the layers, first of all, to get the shadow, second of all, to get my items to actually show up in the final render. You can see what it's rendering out right now, but since this is the plane and it's not going to be visible, it looks fine right now since it's rendering out the cube and the shadow, but once it gets done rendering, you will see what the problem was. It's pretty, pretty, pretty not, not, not pretty, not pretty. But basically, it's pretty simple to do this stuff, and so, yeah. Once this is rendered out, I will finish up the video, and so basically, it's pretty simple to do the motion tracking once you figure out what everything does. Most of the stuff you don't even have to use. Um, so yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like down below. It'll tell us that you like it and that you want to see more videos like it. Uh, you download Blender, which will be in the description below, and also, tell us what to do next. If you want to know a tutorial on Blender, how to do something, if you don't know it, just comment it down below and we'll see if we can get to it. And so, now it's almost done, and you'll see, if you made the mistake, same mistake that I did, everything you render out should look like this. You can see that it's transparent. We don't want that. We want it to be solid. We want to see it. Unless you have something that you want like this, which I'm sure you probably don't. Every, like, I tried to render out a video of um, a cube self-fracturing on my kitchen floor. But it didn't work because it was all transparent and that was my problem. Make sure that whatever object you have is on this first layer. Everything that's on the second layer will not show up in your video as a solid object. So, if you like this video, leave a like, and we will see you in the next video.